Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK, which is part of IBM Europe. This movie is about workload partitions, or WPAR for short, and application mobility where we move WPARs between machines. This is all part of AIX6. In this movie, we're going to compare the view from the global copy of AIX and the WPAR. And we're going to finish by looking at a few simple performance commands like PS and Topaz. In this top window then we have the global copy of AIX. It's the machine that we've been using for the uh, other demonstrations. And I've shut down all the workload partitions apart from this last one, WP13, that's still active. That just makes some of the output from the commands a little clearer as we go on. Down below here we have the workload partition. I've turned it to it. We can see this, uh, its host name and we're going to look at the file systems that it has uh, mounted. So here we go. First of all we note that there's a slash user and a slash opt. These are mounted read-only from the global area. We'll look at that in a minute. Then there are four other file systems in here. var, temp, home and root. If we look at Chronix here we see these are NFS mounted. This is the machine running the uh, NFS server. And we can find in here the actual directory on that NFS server. So this one called WP 13 root is the root file system as far as our workload partition is concerned. Up here we'll look at the global view of the world here. So here we have the file systems for our global copy of AIX. At the top here we have the regular file systems that AIX normally has. No change there. Then we have the mount points for this particular workload partition and we'll have a set of these mount points for each workload partition. We only have one uh, active at the moment, so it makes life a little simpler. This does mean, though, that uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mount points for each workload partition. Of course, if we have uh, ten workload partitions, we'll have seventy mount points in here, so it can make the simple old DF command a little complicated to actually uh, work with. But here we find this is the root file system and uh, that's mounted on the global area and that's then mounted in our WPARS directory under WP13, that's the name of the WPAR itself and then the top one here is root, then we have home, temp and var. We also have mounted here, we've remounted the slash user file system into the same directory and that will be mounted read only and it's these mount points then that are exported if you like, to the WPAR. So these ones here are mounted at read-write, they're exclusively for the use of this particular WPAR, and the root and the opt are mounted read-only, but only for this particular workload partition. Well, with nice clear windows, we'll start again and look at the network side of things. First, the workload partition, we'll use ifconfig-a to look at the network settings. This is the default setup for a simple workload partition. It knows about a single adapter here, and it's set an IP address here of 969.44.123. Let's just confirm that those are the, the right settings. There we go, yes. This is the IP address assigned to this workload partition. Now let's go to the global copy of AIX and look at what it thinks is going on in the network. Again, this is a small logical partition on a machine. It has a single network adapter. Uh, but here we find it has two IP addresses. This is using uh, IP aliasing. We can see the first one, the second one rather, is for the workload partition. What's this top one here? This is the IP address for the global copy of AIX. If we had more workload partitions running, we'll see a whole set of them. Uh, in here, as we're using aliasing one IP address for each workload partition. If the packet comes in for the global copy of AX itself, then it deals with the data. If it comes in on an alias, then that packet is passed to the correct workload partition to deal with the incoming data. Now let's turn our attention to the disks in the machine. In the global area, we can see we have a disk here, HDISK0, in the root volume group, perfectly normal copy of AIX. If we look at the workload partition, we see there are no disks at all. 
We still have the file systems in the machine, but we don't have disks. This means that if a workload partition runs out of disk space, we have to manage that at the global AIX level. If uh, it runs out of space in NFS mounted file systems, like uh, we can see here, then we also might have to talk to a different person that is managing the NFS server and ask him to allocate some disk space for us. And we'll start again, this time looking at paging space. At the global AX level, we can see we have a single paging space here, HD6, first disk, first volume group, um, half a gigabyte in size and only 2% used. Perfectly normal paging space for AIX. If we look at the WPAR level, there's no paging space at all. This just highlights the fact that there's the global copy of AIX that we're doing the paging for all the workload partitions that it's hosting. Now let's focus on the processes running first in the workload partition. As you can see, there's not a lot of processes. We don't have an application running here, so this is the basic set that you'll usually find. First we have some processes here, which are the resource control. Then we have a uh, cron. We have our own cron for each workload partition, so we can have our own cron tab, and they can do their own administration. We have a bunch of processes uh, here, which are to do with the NFS mount points and uh, file systems. We have our own INETD, because we have our own network details in here and uh, things like Telnet have to be started by INETD. We have our own syslog so we're maintaining uh, those as well and then we have uh, Telnet, that's how I actually got to the workload partition PS of course as we're just running it. We have our own init process and a daemon and we have corn shell and we have sendmail actually that's just the default one hasn't been set up yet so we can see there's not many processes in the workload partition. Now let's have a look at the AIX global level. First of all we'll find a lot more processes. We'll find the processes for the global AIX and all the processes for the workload partitions that it's currently running. We find at the top here a standard set. We can see for example here uh, the init process with a PID of 1. Then we find there's two copies of SEMMAIL. One of these will be in the global AIX and one of those in the workload partition. Not easy to spot which is which there. We're running a whole load of other demons in here. This has got the ganglia demon running. we got uh, NFS running here. P console running some Java processes. VNC here for our X windows. Then we have a second set of processes running here for the we're only running one workload partition, WP13 at the moment. There's another copy of init, another copy of syslog and inetd for that workload partition, and so on. A bit of a confusing picture, and this is just with the first workload partition running. Fortunately, we've got an extra option we can add to the PS command. There we go, the minus at command. This minus at is commonly used for a lot of commands and it says give us some workload partition details. So we have an extra column in here. We can immediately tell that all these processes at the top are for the global AIX. And we can see here's the one, first one for the workload partition and it's the send mail process. So we can spot the difference between the two now. We have a corn shell running in a WP3. If we go down a bit further on we'll find a lot more processes here for our workload partition. For example, this in the process is the one that's running in the WP13. Different PID, it's not a 1 in that case. And we find uh, the other processes down here to make up the set that we found in the workload partition itself. But again, this can get very complicated if we're running a dozen copies of a workload partition. Fortunately, we can have a second go here and we can look at the processes for just one particular workload partition. Actually if I make this window slightly larger and do that again, we can see this list of processes here are the same list of processes as we find in our workload partition. But do notice that the PIDs don't match up. A process now in a workload partition has a global PID, process ID, and a PID that it uses when it's in the workload partition, and these two are not exactly the same. For example, we can see cron here with this one here, this PID here, and we can find cron here. It has a different PID 
as seen from the global area. So we'll have to be very careful when we're stopping processes using the kill command. OK, and finally we'll look at Topaz to give us some performance details about our workload partitions. As we can see here in our workload partition, Topaz uh, runs very nicely. We're running a little program called NCPU to actually keep the machine busy to give us something to look at. We also note over here that we have two different colours. Some of these numbers are relative to our workload partition, and some of them are relative to the whole machine. The numbers aren't collected yet at the WPAR level. So the ones in yellow here are global numbers, and the ones in white are for just our workload partition. And we can see out of the resources that we've allocated to our WPAR, we're actually using 100% of them, and that's taking up 0.4 of a CPU. If we go to the global area and we start up Topaz with the minus at sign, we find we have a, a new bit down here, which is about the WPARs. We're only running one at the moment, normally it would come up with a list of them, and we can see how much CPU time each of our WPARs are running. We can see here that the global copy of our X sees slightly higher numbers for the amount of physical CPU time, and it has a different view of amount of CPU resources. I've used the workload manager resource sets to limit the amount of CPU power that the workload partition can actually use. That completes movie 9. We hope you've enjoyed these movies. We could do some more advanced ones, perhaps back up and restart, how to clone performance monitoring and control, how to share applications and how to update AIX and WPAR. But we need feedback from you if you want them. Please let us know that you've enjoyed this first line and that you find them valuable.